Let's see. Hey, Sonia. Welcome. Hey. Hey, everybody. Let's see. I don't know how to. What's going on, everybody? Okay, so welcome everybody to our Talk Tuesdays DMV. All right, so this is the DMV League of Artists, Art Talk Tuesdays. I am your host, Kimiko, better known as Tikoko Creo. And today we have our special guest, Levi Robinson. We'll be talking all things art with him. I'm going to go ahead and add him now, or if you want to try and Come on, Levi. Again, we can do that now. I just had to introduce the platform real quick. Hi, everybody. For people that are just not joining, thank you for coming on in. And I'm going to go ahead and go live with Levi now. Is he in? Let's see. Can you guys hear me? Can you see me? Yes, I can see you. Hey, Levi. Hey, what's up, sis? How you doing? I'm good. Thank you so much for joining us this evening on episode two, Art Talk Tuesdays, where we talk all things art. Um, so, how are you this evening? I'm good. Um. <laughs> I had a little bit of a conflict. One of my kids, my youngest boy, he um, he actually has a game tonight that I got to um, take him all the way out to Springfield, Virginia. Now, are you driving? I'm I'm in a passenger seat. He's driving. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you um, hopping on here and you know being able to talk to us and you know share with the people. Um, what it's like to be an artist in these times. So thank you so much, my brother. <laughs> Absolutely. Pleasure is mine. Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and jump right in since, um, you know, you're in the car and everything. Um, so recently, uh, you and a couple of our other fellow artists and brothers were asked to do murals downtown on Martin Luther King junior day or holiday rather I should say and I just wanted to get a little bit of feedback on how it made you feel as far as being able not only that we've done so many murals this past summer and everything but the atmosphere just explain to me what the atmosphere was like and you know a mist of the inauguration and right after the riots in the Capitol and, you know, having all these, um, what do you say, military presence and National Guard. What was it like to have to paint in the middle of that, knowing that what was going on and hoping that none of that popped off again on that special day? And what was your feeling and how did you you know, how did you put that into your piece that you painted that day? Um, well, you know, it was first of all, let me say it was um, it was an extreme honor, you know, to be able to um, go out on those walls and, and try to say something on behalf of, the, of Dr. King and his legacy and also to speak to, you know, as you said, speak to the moment, the inauguration of, um, you know, uh, Sister Kamala. Harris as the sec as the first uh, black and female first female vice president. Um, it was an honor, you know. Um, there was some anxiety, um, you know, with you know just the idea of being in that environment um, at this particular time, you know, in light of what had what had happened um, on January sixth. But um, you know, it's one of those moments in your life where you know they say. Um, you know, if you don't stand for something, you'll, you'll fall for anything, you know, and 
so that was that was just one of those moments where I think we chose to stand, you know, and um, face whatever you know, whatever may come, you know. Um, that mm -hmm. was our way of serving. That was our way of um, sort of honoring again the legacy, you know, and putting ourselves in harm's way. If you know, if that were to be the case, you know, have ourselves in harm's, yeah. harm's way um, in order to to you know to to spread this message, you know, as part of that that whole concept that we had coined, you know, during the um, the protest movement um, that we called the mural march. You know, right. is our way as artists of marching, you know, yeah. in, in these times. So right. that's what that was like for me. You know, it was very interesting. It turned out that, um, you know, we didn't see much action at all, you know, other than the um, the National Guard. You know, we had National Guard presence there. Right. It was incredible. You know, they're taking pictures and, you know, hanging out with us. And, um, you know, it was it was. It was one, another one of those very, very interesting moments. Right. Yeah. How did it, um, if, if any of the, the National Guards came up to you while you were painting, what were the type of questions that they had for you? Was it anything dealing with Black Lives Matter or how you felt about everything politically? So, Kamiko, I, you, may, you may or may not know this about me, but when I start working, like, I get lost in it. You know what I mean? I'm, like, so locked in. Like, I really didn't even, I didn't even, it didn't register to me that they were National Guard. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, wow. They were just, because people were coming up to us, you know, talking to us and, and taking pictures and all of that. And mm -hmm. I didn't even realize until afterwards, you know, oh, wow. that, that, you know, that they were there. Yeah, you know, I'm taking. We got pictures. I'm taking pictures. When I, I didn't, it did not dawn on me. It didn't occur to me. You know. Wow. You know, to to you know to talk about like what specifically they may have asked. Like I don't even think, for me personally, you know, I can't speak for Dave or um, Sean, but for me personally, I don't recall having any any like specific conversation about that type. They was just shooting it. You know, they was just shooting it with us. Yeah. You know? Which was um, it was cool, you know. Yeah. yeah, it was cool. Yeah, I understand. I mean, just doing the few murals that we did this past summer, and then people just keep coming up to you. And I know I'm not used to that. You know, I'm used to just being in in my own comfort of my house and painting and yeah. getting it done. And so when people start coming up to you, it's like, huh? What? What are you talking right, about? Right, so right. yeah, I totally understand that. Um, how? how has this like okay let me let me put it this way we all know that we went to art basel last year and you know as a dmv league of artists group and i want to know would you ever thought that going there and then having to have this such impact on the community and the country in this time that you would have all these different murals all over the city to speak volumes in, in this time that we're going through the pandemic and being stuck in the house and, you know, this Black Lives Matter and, you know, Black men and girls and everybody being killed for no apparent reason and just having that, you know, like you said before, this is our voice, this is how we march and everything like that. But would you ever have thought back being at the Art Basel that we would be here, you would be here um, at this time, like a year later, you know? Yeah, um, absolutely not. You know, just like you said, you know, I, I had been, you know, accustomed to, my, my medium has always been canvas, you know? So, mm -hmm. you know, just, you know, oddly enough, um, I've just been in this mural space since COVID, you know? I did my first mural mm -hmm. in, in, what was that, May? May of last year, you know, when COVID, when, when COVID yeah. right? That was when I did my very first mural. So to wow. have been able to imagine, you know, that we would end up, you know, being a part of this movement and, and kind of putting some, um, so impactful in this movement, 
you know, which is odd, you know, that, I mean, I guess it's not so odd. Um, we're, in the, we're in the nation's capital, you know? So, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's the reason that our voice would be one of the loudest, you know, as, as far as the globe, right. as far as a global statement is concerned, you know, it stands the reason. But mm-hmm. I never could have imagined, you know, especially back at that time, you know, that um, I know. life would lead us down this path. So, you know, the right. thing, you know, that you always try to, you know, keep in mind is, you know, just stay ready so you don't have to get ready, right? So when right. the call comes, you know, yeah. to answer it, you know, and I think that's kind of what, you know, we were prepared for this moment, you know, even if we didn't realize it. Um, right. I had an, um, an interview a couple of, maybe a couple of, you know, time is all a blur right now. So I, <laughs> either a couple of weeks ago or a couple of months ago. I don't know. Yes. Um, but in that, in that interview, like it kind of dawned, dawned on me in that moment that, um, I've kind of been groomed for this moment. When I was mm-hmm. um, in college, my first major was history. I was a history major. Okay. And I was extremely passionate about history. Right. But I changed my major when I decided to, to ignore the cautions about becoming an artist. Mm. And I put I put my you know my my passion for history away and did what I'm really passionate about, which was pursue this art thing. Right now, at the time, that didn't mean it did. It, I didn't. It didn't occur to me. Those seemed like two completely different disciplines, you know, yeah. that had absolutely no real connection, you know. Mm-hmm. But as this thing started opening up, as you know, this whole civil rights question. Um, started again posing itself and, and rearing his head, it started to dawn on me that I've been preparing for this moment. Yeah. You know, all my life. Yeah. And so I feel like we, all of us, um, this is what we're here for. You know, right. I say the, the, you know, the two most important points or the two po- most important moments in a person's life is the day he's born and the day that he realizes why. Yeah. You know, and I, I think I've realized why I'm here. Yeah. And I owe that to COVID and 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 this um, civil unrest. You know? Yeah. That's so impactful because you know we all want to know why we're here, what what God's purpose is for us. Um, you know and to be able to figure that out, you know, and know that it's such a, a strong impact on, you know, your peers and the community is a, a very strong message. I mean, art can, it lives beyond us, you know, it's, it's going to be here for forever and um, in the history books, you know. So I think that is is, is, is an awesome thing to realize that, okay, this is my purpose. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is how I'm supposed to be sharing my gift with the world through my my painting, my art. So I totally agree. Um, I feel the same. So what was it like um, to stand with, huh? No, no, oh, no, I thought you said something. No, no, go ahead. Uh, I, I, I was going to say, what was it like to stand? I had something to insert. Huh? But I had something to insert, but I didn't want to interrupt. Are we on oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, please. No, no. Yeah, no, I was just going to say that um, what occurred to me um, is, just piggybacking off of what you just said, what occurred to me was the... Um, mm-hmm the impact of public art, you know, specifically, you know, as we talk about yeah. communicating these things and getting these messages out and the importance of it, you know, the, the role that public art plays mm-hmm. in doing that and being able to deliver those messages and be able, being able to, you know, to, you know, Luther, <laughs> I'll bring up Luther because Luther's all over the city. You know what I mean? This guy's everywhere. Oh my Not even all over the city. <laughs> he's out here in Maryland. He's out in Virginia. He's everywhere. But yeah, what he's doing, you know, with the colors and the bright, you know, he's bringing a spirit of, you know, just a, a spirit of um, 
hope, you know, and, and color, you know, which maybe it's not speaking necessarily to the unrest, but the impact that it brings in terms of just, um, you know, people walking by and seeing yeah. it and just feeling something wonderful. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, um, it's a gift, you know what I mean, that we yeah. have. And it's, a, it's, it's um, something to not be taken lightly. It's, right. Um, this opportunity that we that we have, you know, to sort like you said, to share our, our art and our skills um, and our talents. You know? mm -hmm. I, I agree. Just to insert that. But go ahead. I'm sorry. I know you're fine. <laughs> you're absolutely fine. We we fam, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um. So what I was gonna say was, um. Now I know recently you and another fellow um, brother artist friend of ours, um, Des have started your own um, spray paint line. And I wanted to know what inspired you uh, to start that one and um, how has it helped with doing your murals? Um, have you used those products doing your murals? And is it easier to have that uh, you know, starting a company in, in the middle of all of this, is, do you think it's easier or has it been, you know, a challenge? What, what is your take on that? Uh, first, let me say, I hate that guy, Des. Don't like him at all. <laughs> he, he said he was going. He, he said he was going to join this call and start making making bad comments about my beard. You know. <laughs> So there I, I see him. The preempt that. See, Father Tom. See, see how this guy. No. Um, all jokes aside, um, it was it was it was real organic how it played out. To be honest with you, it wasn't even it wasn't even something that we sort of planned. You know, he um, an opportunity sort of presented itself to him, and you know he came to me and he was like, "Look, this is what I'm gonna do." I would love it if you did it with me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and, um, and, you know, it was a no-brainer, you know? Right. I mean, you, do the, you do the math, it just made sense. You know, he mm -hmm. and I are good friends. You know, we've come to get really close, you know, during this um, during this movement. You know, I yeah. met him when I did my first mural, you know? That was the day. Wow, that's day. something I didn't know. I yeah. thought you guys went way back. Yeah, you would think, right? Right. We just, you know, for whatever reason, you know, it just, it just worked. You know, it was like okay. Alan Costello, you know. Wow. <laughs> the skinny guy. <laughs> right. <laughs> that is hilarious. I, I would have never guessed that. Yeah. Because you guys are so, it, it's like you guys known each other forever since you were kids. That's yeah. what I got from you guys. So, wow. I mean, okay. that's what it feels like, you know. Mm -hmm. we, um, you know, we just we just, we just developed a really good relationship, and um, so it just it just made sense, you know. Yeah. Um, when you look at, you know, what we're doing anyway, right? It just it just made sense, you know. And yeah. we have been working on another project, you know, together, which again, you know, it was born from pretty much the same thing. You know, he said, mm -hmm. "Listen, this is what I want to do. I would love it if you did it with me." You know, yeah. I was like that. You know. So in yeah. addition to working on that project, you know, we um, realized that we had space. Um, we, you know, this project was involving Sean, you know, mm -hmm. uh, we got some studio space together, um, John nice. um, mm -hmm. and his brother Aaron. Um, and in the midst of doing that project, you know, this project presented itself and um, we just okay. kind of took, the, took the bull by the horns, you know, and we just, right. we're working it, we're working it, you know, our idea, our concept, um, we want to, not only do we want to, um, obviously be successful right. you know, and bring, um, bring some, uh, value to our own families, but we also want to, we want to provide value. We want to give value, you know? So, you know, we, we have this, uh, these initiatives where we're, you know, we're, um, partnering and sponsoring community service events. Mm -hmm. um, we have a, an initiative that we're doing now with um, Pedal Share, Heather's, okay. her nonprofit, 
to um, provide some technology for battered women um, mm. at this um, this this home. You know, that, okay. That, um, they're battered. They're they're um, women that have just been released. You know, from from prison or whatever, whatever the mm -hmm. circumstances are. You know, mm -hmm. in tough situations, and we're trying to, you know, provide some support for them. Okay. Through all city, you know. Mm. So it just, wow. you know, we're not only are we, you know, in the interest of receiving, but we also want to make sure that we pay it forward. Right. You know, we, Absolutely. You know. Yeah. Absolutely. I think that that is important to pay it forward because when you're blessed, you should be able to bless others. Um, that's really important, and I'm so glad that you guys are, you know, taking that on. Um, a little bit about yourself, um, if you don't mind sharing with the audience, what what made you want to get into art to begin with? Like, what did you see? Says, you know, was it when you were younger in high school, college? What was it that in your mind was just like? I want to create art. I don't know how, but I love art. I know for me, I was a kid and I was drawing nonstop in my room for hours on end. And then, called, you know, high school, my art, my teacher was the one that introduced me to painting and stuff. But was it was what was it like for you? For me, it was, I mean, it was much the same. You know, I think all of us, not all of us, but many of us, we share that same narrative, you know. Mm -hmm. We were little, you know, we picked up, whether it was picking up a crayon mm -hmm. or, or color pencil or pen, or just, you know, one of them old number two pencils, you know, it just, you know, the love affair started then, you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. To be more specific, um, my uncle, who um, passed away about, now two years ago, um, he was he was an artist, uh, not, mm -hmm. not you know, professional, amateur, you know, but he was good. And when I was a kid, he um he painted this mural, oddly enough, on my bedroom wall. That mural, oh, wow. it was a um, it was a lot. He liked to paint animals, you know, so he had painted this lion, uh -huh. and a black panther fighting in the jungle, and it, it, it lit up oh, wow. the bedroom wall. So when I went to sleep at night, that's what I was looking at, you know? And I was, he was my hero, you know? My uncle was my hero. He played basketball, I wanted to play ball like him. I just wanted to be like him, you know? And so, I right. think that sparked it in me, you know, just chasing, you know, what to me was his legend, you know? And so I started, you know, mm -hmm. sensing and, and drawing. And, and it did. It still really didn't occur to me um, as I was just doing little doodles and, you know, and, and, and whatever. It didn't really, really occur to me that I was really passionate about it um, until I really started getting into comic books, you know. And okay. that was probably around mm, maybe the fourth grade, fourth or fifth grade. You know, I saw oh. comic books, and me and my friends, we would, um, you know, we would draw the characters, you know, the comic book characters, Wolverine, <laughs> one of my boys, like, uh, uh, what's his name, um, Master Kung Fu. Oh, wow. That's the hardest. I hated that comic book, but he loved it, you know, and uh, we would just draw these, you know, draw these comic characters. I was an X-Men and the Spider-Man guy. You know? Wow. And... <laughs> So just my love for, for Marvel Comics, you know, it, it it started like really, really helping me to, to hone the skills, you know. Okay. Starting to work, work on body parts, whereas mm. before I was just kind of just working on portraits, you know, just eyes, nose, just working on each piece one at a time, you know. Right, right. And, um, you know, just, just as, I, as I started doing that, you know, mm -hmm. again, I started honing my skills a little bit, okay. and then graffiti happened, you know? Oh, wow. You know, break, break dancing and electric boogaloo, all of that started getting down. That and part. I'm, I'm from Jersey. I'm from Jersey. I'm from North New Jersey, so I'm right oh, across the bridge from New York. 
And hey. Yeah. So me and my boys, we used to break back, break dance battle. We used to pull out cardboard on concrete. Wow. Yeah. Oh. You know. So, you know, I started trying my hand at graffiti. I, I I wasn't really good at it. I never really got good at it. Right. Um. But it was another one of those expressions, you know, that I was trying and that I realized that I was like, I, I was like, I love this. This is so, this is so yeah. dope, you know? So I'm in math class and I'm doing little graffiti, you know, doing little tags and whatnot, you know? What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. True story. Let me find <laughs> out. You was tagging. Yeah, yeah I was doing a little something. I was terrible, but you know, oh, Jazz said that's why my knees are bad. Jeez. Oh, man. Those are the days, though, man. Oh, oh my yeah. goodness. Oh, yeah. Those I think the days. 80s, 90s, that's, that was some best times, man. I mean, look at look at what is what is done. It created a whole culture, you know? Mm-hmm. Those, those, were, those were absolutely the days, man. Yes. There's some amazing graffiti artists back then. Oh, you know? yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Did you I know um, any specific artists back then or you were kind of unaware of that at no, that time? I was I was unaware. You know, I yeah. was just, I was just a kid doing, you know, trying my hand in a in a million different things, you know. Mm -hmm. And um but you know the music, you know, the graffiti, just all just hip hop culture. It was just it was just so um it was such an integral part of our lives as as young black kids growing up, young black males growing yeah. up in, in that region, you know, mm -hmm. that, um, you know, we was just like hip hop, hip hop was everything, you know what I'm saying? It yeah, was, it was everything, everything, you know, if we wasn't break dancing. Yeah. If we wasn't breaking and we wasn't trying to do bad graffiti, which is what, you know, many of us did, then we was trying to rap, you know, we had little MC names and <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Oh my you know? goodness, that's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. What was your name? Yeah. Did you have a name back nah, then? We're not gonna get into that. <laughs> nah, we're gonna get into that. <laughs> <laughs> gonna oh that. my goodness, that's hilarious, man. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. But um, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think that you know, coming up when we came up, we had such an awesome you know impactful you know from the hip hop to like you said break dancing that also had art in it you know that's all around art you know the form of dancing you know later on I went back and I know I like I personally did a project when I was in college and I used you know break dancing movements to put in my art piece you know so that I think plays a part in art you know um yeah, yeah, absolutely. but uh yeah so okay let's see <laughs> um i did have another question for you in regards to what advice would you give other young and up-and-coming artists today as far as honing in on their craft and identifying with which direction they want to go and um just being confident and knowing that they can too make it as an artist you know i know you know sometimes coming up the older generation may not have i know that you said that you had a strong influence coming up but some people don't always have that and they are misdirected you know and not sure or not confident enough to know that their art is good and you just have to keep practicing and keep going what advice would you give the up-and-coming artists today um on pursuing art um i think the first thing i would do is work on disposing of the myth that you can't make a living at this thing Mm. That was something that, you know, while I said, you know, my uncle, you know, he had an influence on me in terms, he never encouraged me to do it. Mm -hmm. He never encouraged me to do, you know, to pursue it as a career. You know, he didn't pursue it as a career because the old adage was, you know, you don't want to be a starving artist, you know. Um, but 
that's that's a really unfortunate um it's an unfortunate um idea to sort of instill in a child because you know the sky is the limit and if mm. you do something with enough passion and yeah you, um enough determination you know you can succeed you know you can be you can make anything you know anything yeah. you know and as you know this 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 internet age and you know and technology continues to advance you know i think that becomes more and more evident right so i would definitely work first on dispelling that myth you know you can make a living at this now once you decide that this is something you want to pursue because you know again there are many avenues that you can go down in order to you know to make a, a, you know a, a lucrative or a handsome living at it um, right once you've decided that this is what you want to pursue you then have to start really really working on perfecting your craft you know sit mm -hmm. down in something you know don't jump all over the place sit down and mm. really start to develop what you're doing and then start breaking out and i yeah. always encourage breaking out like i know a lot of a lot of people um a lot of people kind of get they, they go down one road and they stay on that road and mm. that's great that's great you know yeah I think that I, I absolutely think that's great, but I also, I also feel like, you know, there's this saying, um, learn the rules so that you can break them, like mm. an artist. Powerful. So that's that's where the art begins. You get your foundation. You learn everything that you need to know, yeah. just from a foundational standpoint. You understand this thing on an ethereal level right and then once you do that that's when you become an artist that's when you can put away the science a little mm. bit and express you know so my advice to them would be really 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 perfect your craft and then explore you know let that let that creativity come mm -hmm. out and as long as you're honest you know, that's the other thing that that's really important to me is honesty. Yeah. Right? Don't try to pursue a thing right. just because a thing is popular. You know, mm. that's you know, that's me, that's it's short lived, right? You can ride a wave. Yeah. Waves come and go. You know, the tide shifts. Don't do a thing just because it's the current shift in the tide. Right. Do it because you believe in it. You know what I mean? When you do something yeah. that you believe in, you can attack it with a lot more integrity. And you can really, really mm -hmm. get good at what you're doing. And you can really make, you know, you can make your presence felt and be more impactful. Um, right. So I don't know if that was too much. but No, it's perfect. Tell them more. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because you're, you're right on point. You know, I, I have a nephew that is into animation and he's been drawing and drawing and drawing and that's all i do is instilling him keep it up keep drawing keep drawing you know and 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 hone in on that one particular thing don't jump over here or there focus on this one one thing right here and then get better at it and then you'll be an amazing animation artist one day but keep at it you know don't give up but i think you know um Artists that are coming up and artists that are present now, you know, need to be told that, you know, you need to be reminded that I, I, I totally agree with you. We, we tend to, I, I know myself, I get sometimes roadblocks, you know, where I'm like overthinking things, you know, and I think a lot of times up and coming artists feel that way and, and find it to be discouraging, you know. Yeah. And give up. So, you know, they, they tend to give up. Yeah, yeah. But like you said, you, you can't give up. Hone in on that one thing. Focus on it. Don't do a trending thing, like you said. And it will just, you know, it will get better with time. Kamiko, persistence is everything. Mm -hmm. It's everything. They say 
oftentimes, and I read this many years ago, and um, I'm a name drop, but uh, Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich, I read this years ago, when, like mm -hmm. in my 20s. And one of the things, one of my takeaways from that book was, he said, often success lies one step beyond failure. Mm. Or you reach that point where you feel like you failed, if you just take one more step, mm. that's often where your success is, you know? Yes. And, but people, people, you know, they face obstacles, you know, things get in their way, and they tend to give up. They tend mm. to pack, their, you know, pack up their bag and go home. And mm. that's where I think you miss, you know, your calling. That's where you miss that, um, that reward because, you know, success, I believe, success wants to reward you, right? Right. It wants to reward you. It wants you to earn its favor. Right. It doesn't want you to just, you know, not, like they say, nothing, nothing good comes easy, right? You know? That's real. You got to earn it. You know, you got to earn it. And earning it means you go through the tough times. You mm -hmm. keep pushing through. Because those are the things, those experiences are the things that are forming the diamond. Right. You know? That's the pressure that's forming the diamond. Mm -hmm. And if you stop it, if you get, if you, like, in other words, get out your own way. Right? Just get out your own way. Let the process take place. You know, you're going to fail. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to fall. All, you're going to scrape your knee. All that stuff is going to happen. But right got to keep getting up you got to keep getting back up imagine right. if you were a child and every time you fell you just laid there you know mm. you never walk no you would never walk you know you gotta you gotta get up you gotta keep right. getting up and eventually you know you'll be walking then you'll be running and then you'll be hopping on you know jet blue and, and, and taking a flight somewhere <laughs> exactly <laughs> Exactly. Um, man, it's, you know, I, I think that it is very important to, again, like you said, to keep going because um, as yourself, you have kids. And I think with with me, I, I, I want to give back to, you know, my nieces and nephews and God willing, I'll have a family one day. But for, you know, artists like yourself, you have kids so you have a uh, generational wealth that you want to build up like you were mentioning before when it came to the spray paint but as far as the actual painting and that drive that you have in yourself to want to not only do it for yourself but to do it for your children and their children and their children and so on and so on and i think that you know you as a, a young black man, <laughs> you know, allowing that that um, artistry in you to drive you and then share with your children is so impactful. Um, how has this whole uh, experience for you doing the murals and everything like that, how has that um, affected your conversations with your sons or your daughters and um, what what is their take on everything? Well, um, so young people, this generation, they ain't, they, they, it's very hard to impress them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they see, you know, they, they're so overstimulated. You know what I'm saying? They go on their they can go on their phone and see just the most miraculous things the world has to offer, you know, easy. Right. You know? <laughs> so it's really hard to impress them. But, you know, I think, you know, I know that they are impressed. You know, they're proud of their dad. You know, they, they've seen my journey. You know, they've seen, you know, what I've been through. You know, and I've been through a lot. You know, whether it be, you know, prior to them entering this world or even afterwards. They know that I have a story. Right. And yeah. for me to be standing here, I am beating so many statistics. I am beating so many statistics. And mm -hmm. with that facing, in light of that reality, I don't 
take credit for that, right? Mm. I'm not the reason why I beat those statistics. And they right. know that I understand that, you know? Yeah. And I try to make sure that, you know, that I instill that idea, that same sort of um, understanding in them. And that... Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, I think. Them being able to witness, you know, their dad, you know, speaking to such important topics and, you know, like my son is sitting next to me right now, you know, while I'm talking about this stuff, you know, and, it's, mm -hmm. it's, for me, it's, it's creating, this is legacy stuff that many of us didn't have right. our parents coming up, you know? Many of us don't even, right. really, barely even know what our parents did, you know, for a living, you know, um, certainly on an intimate level. Like, what is, what is this guy going through every day right. you know, when, he goes, when he goes out those doors? Mm. And... I'm fortunate enough for them to have the benefit of seeing me go through not only my processes, but, you know, everything, all the fallout, you know, yeah. whether it be, you know, news and, you know, whatever, you know, whatever's been yeah. happening, they've had the, 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 you know, the pleasure of seeing this stuff happen. And um, I don't know if it really, if it really lands on them yet. You yeah. Know? But my hope is that one day, you know, when they start, you know, when this world starts to, you know, starts to put some weight on their shoulders and they, they can slow down and sort of reflect, you know, on the things that, you know, that has made them who they are. You know, I hope that that's when these things will start to occur to them and they'll start to understand, you know, some yeah. of the things that we've been trying to instill in we. Mm. You know? um, but just being able to do this for them, um, it's you know it, I'm I'm at a loss for words you know for yeah. what that means to me personally you know um, so I just keep pushing. You know? <laughs> well, yeah. praise be to the Lord for you know just keeping you and instilling in you that drive to want to keep going for not only yourself but your kids. Um, it's an amazing journey that I've th seen since I've known you. Um, I can't even imagine what it's been like for them. So um, it's been awesome. I'm going to see if I, I do have a few questions here. I'm going to open up. Let's see. Okay. Okay. Says, um, I think we asked this already, but. Um, Jay says he can't hear me. It's, oh, it, that was earlier, but was earlier. I think you're good now. I think you're good now, but. So we have a question here. It says, what are some artists that inspired you? That's a good question. By Indigo Child, which is Nephi. Nephi, Nephi, Nephi. <laughs> um, some artists that inspired me. Um, my, the, first, <laughs> the first artist that inspired me was, um, was, uh, was Ernie <laughs> Barnes. Ernie Barnes. Ernie yeah, Barnes, um, OK. I mean, I obviously, you know, good times. You know, when I was a kid, you know, you couldn't wait for JJ to reveal a new painting. That's right? oh my goodness, yeah. Couldn't wait, couldn't wait. And um, I remember that. When I went to college, I went to North Carolina Central, which is the same school he went to. Oh wow! It's crazy. I went to school with his daughter. Oh, really? crazy! Yeah, that's crazy. interesting. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so that was my guy. That was my guy, and wow. you know he's influenced so many, you know, beyond beyond him. You know, into into you know this these, this current generation. Mm -hmm. You know, you, if you you look at Charles Bibbs' work, I'm a big fan of yeah. Charles Bibbs. Mm. Look at um, Frank Morrison. Frank okay. Morrison took a lot of the the sentimentality of of like just um, um urban. Um, 
urban lifestyle. Right. Which is where, you know, Ernie Barnes really, really dug into like what it means to grow up black mm. in the hood, you know, yes. in the ghetto yeah. from, from, you know, back in the 60s and 70s. Mm -hmm. Frank Johnson does a lot of that current, you know, contemporary, you know, uh, urban lifestyle, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and and he's he's a contemporary, you know, and I shout him out, I don't care. You know, he's he's dope. Yeah. Um, uh, Keanu well, says um, Black Jesus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Paul Goodnight. I love Paul Goodnight. Now, these are all Black artists. Um, okay. And, you know, most of them are still alive, you know. Mm. And I don't mind shouting them out because, you know, they, they you know, they help to, they to me, they help to inform us, you know. Right. Um, uh, as far as... Um, Art, artists from the Renaissance. I'm, I like um, um, Da Vinci. Um, you know the usual suspects. Mm -hmm. um, Gustav Klimt was my guy. Um, this guy's shining his headlights right in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was good yeah. though, because we could see you clearly. <laughs> yeah, and I love Rembrandt. Rembrandt is another one. Oh yes, he's fan. really good. Rembrandt. Yeah, his 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 work with light, you know, his mastery of light, mm -hmm. light and shadow, is just, just amazing. Yeah, it's just amazing. Yeah. yeah, those are some of the some of the artists that influenced me. Finn Finn and Jack Jay, and Jay, Jay Dara and Luis and Dan Zambrano and Kiana Clark and <laughs> Kamiko. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, any more questions oh. out there, um, go ahead and put them in the comments. We have a few more minutes um, with our artist, Levi Robinson. Just we're talking all things art. And uh, it's been such an amazing time thus far with you on this live. We need to do this more often, you know, yeah. um, just sharing our knowledge, right? and um our experiences with art uh what it takes to be an artist right um what inspires you you know um i have another question here let me see okay they they come up in these uh, little question things okay someone said uh how did you learn to spray paint how did i learn to spray paint Oh wow! Um, <laughs> so I got it, Des. Des, you know my my when I when I came out the first time I did I did when I did my first mural like I was so I was so technical I was so mathematical with it. Mm. <laughs> I, had, I, I stayed up all night. I was making these stencils and all wow. kinds. Of, yeah, and I took them out on site and I'm working with these stencils. And like I'm killing myself getting all this stuff together. And by the time I got all my stuff set up, this man Dez was packing his bags, headed home. He had already <laughs> done two murals. And I was pissed. I was like, look at this guy, man. I hate this guy. <laughs> but what I did was, um, I think like maybe the next time out, you know, we um when we went to do our next mural, he was like, Bro, you what you're doing. You know, I see you progressing from one mural to the next, you know. Yeah. So the first mural I, I did, I had all these stencils. The next mural, I had a few less stencils. Mm -hmm. And then the third one, I didn't have any stencils at all. Wow. And I did my third one, you know, was so much better than the, than the first two. And Des mm -hmm. walked by, he was like, yo. He was like, bro, listen, whenever you want to learn something, I got you. And I was like. Bro, you don't know what you're saying right now. I need you to think about what you just said. I will be knocking at your door. Right. Like, like, Come on. So, I mean, that's kind of that's kind of where so you started teaching me little stuff, you know, angles, and you know, started teaching me about the caps and the, you know, and pressure mm. and all of that kind of stuff. Right. I, you know, I learn from them every day. You know, I mm -hmm. learn from them every day, and you know, hopefully, you know, I'm only you know not even a year in. Yeah. You know, uh, and, and, and I've developed, you know, to this point, you know, so, you know, hopefully the sky's the limit, you know, by Absolutely. this time next year, I'll be, you know, twice you're, as good. You're already a beast. 
<laughs> you are a beast. Say it. I'm a beast. <laughs> You're modest. <laughs> but, okay, we have one more question, and we're going to wrap it up. Uh, let me see. Kiana said we remember. <laughs> <laughs> what okay the question is what has this experience been for you as far as the whole protests and doing murals downtown yeah that's what they said mm -hmm. so i guess they're saying you know what was your experience basically doing the murals during this time during protests during pandemic i think i asked this but if you don't mind reiterating that for our viewers. Okay. This man, this man, Luis, just said, I'm a beast. Yeah, a you are a beast. He <laughs> you are. Luis is a beast, too. Luis Everybody's a beast. A beast. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, so, I mean, this movement, it, I mean, it's been, it's been surreal, right? Mm -hmm. It's been surreal. We, um, we started off you know, dealing with COVID. Right. You know, and, and that was moving the world, you know? Right. And who would have thought that it could get any worse? And then an officer put his knee on George Floyd's neck. Mm. And it put, it made, it put COVID in, 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 a, in a separate pocket, right? Right. It was like, okay, no one cares about COVID right now. You know what I mean? Right. People were protesting. Everybody was out in the streets. You know, COVID be damned, you know? Exactly. And that was just how important and how impactful those two moments were. In yeah. Country, you know? And for us to have been able to get out and speak to these moments, you know? And I got I to gotta shout out um, the Paints Institute, by the way. Yes. Thank okay. you. Yes. The Paints Institute created some of these um, opportunities, you know, Absolutely. for us to speak in this moment, you know, many of us right. to speak in this moment. And it is snowball, you know, it went from, okay, we're talking about, you know, COVID and, and, and trying to give these messages of hope and, and, and togetherness and all of that. And right. then it was, now we got to speak about injustice, you know, now we have to, do, go about the work of making this a safer place yeah. for ourselves and our children and their children, right? Right. right. And you find yourself with a paintbrush in your hand, you know, trying to use that as a weapon in this battle. Yeah. And when you realize that that brush is in your in your hand, it's humbling. Yeah. You know what I'm saying it's like, yo, what? Me? I'm supposed to say something now in this moment. Me? Right. You know, it's it's humbling, man. And so, you know, for me to have been in in a in a position, you know, to to be able to to do that, to be able to speak in this time, mm -hmm. is is something that I will never ever in my life forget. Yeah, this is one of the most important, the most meaningful times of my life. Yeah, you know, and mm -hmm. I'm 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 proud of I'm proud of some of the things that I've been able to accomplish, but I'm, if not equally, maybe even more proud of those around me mm. who have stepped up in this moment as well. Absolutely. You know, to be surrounded, you know, by people that get it. To yeah. be surrounded by people that are courageous enough to say something right now. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people aren't courageous enough no. to say something right now. Right. You know, but, you know, fortunately, you know, I, I'm surrounded by good, strong people, you know, Absolutely. good people that believe in what they're doing yeah. and that, you know, again, have the courage and the decency to, you know, to step up at a time like this, you know. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I don't know if that answers the question, but. No, I think it, I think you hit it right on the head, bro. Oh my goodness, we have another question. Okay, this is the last question, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> this is the last question um, from Arastarat. 
Do you have any unconventional tools that you've discovered along the way to apply paint? Oh, that's a nice question. Uh, good, good. Uh, yeah, I don't know how unconventional it is, but I've used credit cards. <laughs> I've used sponges. I love using sponges. I use sponges all the time. Right. Um, I've used rags. I've used, oh my God. Um, I think Heather's on here somewhere. She could probably type in. <laughs> stuff she's seen me pull out. I mean, but I've, I've used all types of things, you know, currently. Jess uses the beard. I mean, <laughs> see? You like that one artist that paints with his face. Yeah, you know, yeah. I dip my beard in, in some, <laughs> dip my beard in some acrylic and go to work. <laughs> I hate that guy. I hate oh, yeah, but yeah. Man. I've used all kinds of stuff. You know, I, you know, I think it's, I think it just, you know, just it, it broadens the horizons. You know, currently, um, I don't know if you know if you've seen it, Kamiko, but I'm working on, um, and this isn't all that unconventional, but um, you know, just painting on these windows. Mm. These murals on windows right it intrigued me and it made me want to work on glass mm. right so now i'm making these paintings and i'm painting them directly on glass and then nice. i'm mounting them to, and i'm mounting them to wood yeah you i know? saw that recently so, yeah i saw so, that that's really dope yeah i mean i i love it i love it it's you know it, you know it's a, it's a trick learning how to handle glass you know, mm. paint and glass, you know, yeah. but, you know, once you, you know, again, those, those, those window murals have kind of groomed us, you know, yeah. to handle it, you know, so mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, it's a lot of fun. I like to try different things, you know, uh, who knows what I'll, I'll use next. You know, I might right. The sky's the limit, right? Yeah, you know. <laughs> and the beard, too. <laughs> and the beard. <laughs> well, it has yeah. been an awesome, awesome time with you, my brother. Um, just Likewise. talking and, you know, chopping it up with everything that's going on. This has been amazing. And I'm so glad that you are our uh, second artist to grace the stage here on the DMV League Art Talk Tuesdays. Um, any last words for the audience before we close? Absolutely. Got a couple. The first okay. <laughs> is well done, Kamiko. Oh, thank yes. you. Yes. I want to thank you and I want to thank Nephew for putting this together to begin with. You know, it's a it's a great it's a great idea. It's a great concept. You're doing an excellent job. I'm very thank proud you. of you. I'm very proud of you. I'm gonna say that again. I'm very proud thank of you. <laughs> thank well you. Done. I have one suggestion. Yes. One suggestion. And this, this isn't even my idea. This is Dez's idea. Okay. We have to figure out a way to get these on YouTube so that they're not mm. just gone. Right? You're this absolutely is, correct. Yeah, this is content for the league, you know? So absolutely. So we should be able to, you know, tap back into all this information. Yes. He was on here last week and he was dropping gems and it's gone now, you know? Well, actually, we saved it. You didn't save it? Oh, yeah, we saved it. We're 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 ahead of you, Levi. Right, we so saved let's it, it. Let's get it on YouTube. If um you know you guys get and set up that set that up, that would be dope. And um, we have a podcast coming soon. Nephi just told me to mention that real quick. So see, see. yeah, we're trying to make it work. We are. Oh, Luis said he was just about to write that. Cause, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So good job, good job, ladies. I'm you know I'm very proud of you guys. And um, thank this was you. An honor. It's an honor to have this time speaking to, speaking to you, um, Kamiko, and whoever else is yes. I appreciate um, you. This has been awesome, Leva. And I'm like like you said before, it, it is a very important thing to have a group of like minded artists to build up each other. And I I think of you guys as my family, you know, not just fellow artists, but my my family because we all instill in each other. We all lift up each other. Nobody ever puts anybody down, you know, or jealous of anyone. We're all in our own lanes, but we're all together. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and it's good yeah. to have support. It's great. It's great to have Absolutely. a good system, a good system, you know, a network behind you. 
um, Kiana, we owe absolutely you know, credit to Kiana and Jay for putting this thing together in the first place. And, you know, just create, they, they, they set the tone, you know, mm -hmm. they set the tone for everyone, you know, supporting one another, you know, right. and just being a resource for one another. And so that's very important that, you know, that again, we, we recognize them and the work that they do to create this platform for us, to create this Absolutely. environment for us. Um, and it's our job, you know, to be good custodians of that, you know, yes. and um, just do our part, just keep paying it forward, keep supporting each other. You know? Exactly. And, um, you know, shout out your Instagram, your all your social media platforms, let the people know where they can find you where they can find your art, talk about, um, well, not talk about but uh, let them know where they can find your latest interview. Um, really quickly. And um, we're gonna close it out after that. All right. Um, real simple um, is Levi Robinson Art on almost any platform you, you choose. It's uh, you know uh, LeviRobinsonArt.com for my website. Um, and I mean that pretty much sums it up. That's me. That's all I got. Great. I'm I'm trying to see if I can pin you on here. I thought I did, but I'm gonna pin you on here. That way you can have it too. And um, Listen, show some love to All City as well. All City Art on Instagram. We haven't expanded yet beyond that, you know, as far as social media is concerned. But All City Art on um, on Instagram. We, you know, we hope to be, you know, the supporting um, uh, supply store for the DMV League. Yes. Um, you know, we have some ideas on how we can, you know, absolutely bring value to the league, um, you know, through that. So, yeah. All right. Well, thank you again, Levi. I will check you. I'll see you soon. And um, much love to the family and everybody. You have a blessed evening. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. Night, everybody. Okay, you guys, that is it for DMV Art Talk Tuesdays. I'm so grateful that you came on and um, just spent an hour with us. I know we went over a little bit, but that's okay. Um, next week, we'll have Brian with us. Uh, you can check his page out. Let me see if I can find it. I can't find it right now, but we will have our next artist next Tuesday. His name is Brian, so look forward to that. We'll be talking about all things art. We'll be talking about uh, Double Cross uh, and all entails with that. So I hope to see you guys next week. And thank you so much. Take care. Have a great evening. Bye.